Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. If you don't know who I am, hi, hello, my name is Janessa and today I am bringing you guys another murder, mystery, and nails tutorial. You guys already know if you're a subscriber on my channel, these are my favorite ones to film. My last true crime video I know was really intense really deep and really sad so this week i'm not gonna make it as sad and heartbreaking even though i know that all true crime cases are sad and heartbreaking um this one's just gonna be not so as dark <laughs> if that's even possible if you aren't sure what i mean by my true crime videos once a week i like to bring you guys a nail video where i talk about a true crime case while doing my nails at the same time i'm really interested about true crime and the criminal justice system so it's just a little series i added on to my channel and as far as today's nails go I'm going to be trying this Gershon Poly Gel Kit. Um, I think it just has like three or so colors in it. I've had it for a little bit, so I kind of forgot, but that's fine. We can just be surprised together. So if you'd like to listen to today's true crime case, chit chat and do some nails with me with this Gershon Poly Gel, then please keep watching. Bye. All right, hello everyone. I will have this kit linked in the description if you would like to purchase it for yourself. But let's get into today's case. If you're a fan of true crime, chances are you've heard of this case. It captivated our country when it took place back in 2011 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where a woman was arrested in the death of her husband. She pushed him out of a window in a high rise apartment building. Amber Michelle Hilberling. 19 at the time, married her high school sweetheart, Air Force veteran Joshua Hilberling, who was 23. The couple had only been married about a year when they tied the knot on July 30th, 2010. They had met at a Halloween party, became friends, and shortly after that, they fell in love. Amber had told everyone that she was marrying the man of her dreams. Josh was known for being the biggest sweetheart. He was very romantic, tender, loving. He had the cutest smile and was just a really great, witty kind of guy. Since Josh was in the Air Force, Amber had been following him where he was stationed and staying with him on the bases. After he was discharged, they moved back home to Tulsa in Amber's mom's house. Amber and Josh had been living there for a few months when the couple started fighting all the time. Amber's mom said she couldn't take it anymore. They were being physical with each other, breaking things, and it was time for them to move out. Amber's mom even found an apartment, paid for everything to get them into their new place, and helped them get all settled in, hoping this might be a fresh new start and motivate them to get their lives back on track. Amber was seven months pregnant with their son when her and Josh were living on the 25th floor at the University Club Tower Apartments in apartment number 2509. The Club Tower Apartments was the eighth tallest building in Tulsa at the time, and it actually has a really pretty architectural structure. It's shaped into a cylinder. There are 32 floors with apartments going all the way up, and each apartment has a really nice view of downtown Tulsa. There's a ton of windows in each apartment looking over the city, and it would be a really cool place to live at the time. But on June 7, 2011, at 4.09 p.m., a witness called 911 saying he was sitting outside having a smoke when he saw something horrific. He saw someone falling from one of the top apartment buildings, which he believed was about the 20th floor. He said he heard a loud glass breaking sound and then saw a person fall very fast and land on the roof of the building's parking garage. The apartment had an eight-story parking garage where all the residents would park in, but when paramedics arrived on the scene, it was too late. The victim was pronounced DOA, and we know he had multiple broken bones, he was face down, and his body was said to be basically crumpled up. While he laid there, paramedics say there was a very pregnant woman laying on top of him, holding him, crying, begging for him to wake up, which we now know was Amber and her deceased husband, Josh Hilberling. But how did she make it to Josh before paramedics? Lucky for us, there was another witness there that day. That same day, the couple had a maintenance man inside their apartment fixing a broken window in the master bedroom. He said when he arrived, the couple seemed upset like they had been arguing. There was tension in the air and he said there was a suitcases packed up by the front door. 
the maintenance worker went into the master bedroom while the couple stayed in the living room. The worker had to get out on the balcony to measure the window so he couldn't hear exactly what Amber and Josh were saying, but that suddenly he heard a crash and then he saw Josh's body falling from the building. He said he ran into the room and saw the giant hole in the wall where the window used to be. He said Amber was repeating something over and over and that's when he ushered her into the elevator and down to the lobby where he says all he could think about was that he was inside the elevator standing next to a killer because what he heard Amber repeatedly saying was, I pushed him, I pushed him. Once they reached the body, which was Josh's obviously, it was immediately apparent that he unfortunately did not survive the 17 floors he fell to his death. But did Amber push him on accident or was this planned? Did she just kill her husband and a maintenance worker witness basically the whole thing? Josh was 6'6", 220 pounds, and Amber was 5'5", 120 pounds. So was it even possible for little Amber to push Josh out of a window like this? So at first, Amber wasn't seen as a suspect. She was seven months pregnant, and when police went inside their apartment, they saw no sign of a struggle, no evidence that anything happened happened between the two of them, and that was until they took statements from the maintenance worker and a neighbor who lived underneath the couple. The maintenance worker said Amber was repeatedly saying she pushed him out of the window, and neighbors say they heard a, a sound like someone was running towards something and then a large crash. Amber was taken down to the police station with her grandma to get away from the scene and take a breather because at first, police didn't think she had anything to do with it. While her and her grandma are sitting in the interrogation room, Amber breaks down and starts talking to her grandma, not knowing they are being recorded and Amber basically confesses to pushing Josh out of the window. The interrogation is about an hour long and I'll link it in the description for anyone who wants to watch it, but I'm just gonna add in the parts that I think are important. But regardless, I'm going to jail. That doesn't mean we're just doing your rights. You just don't understand how things work. You just don't say nothing until your attorney gets here. Okay? So we're going to be here for like hours. Yeah, it'll probably be a long night. We're going to poke you. I just want to be with Josh. They're I gonna... just want to die. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Amber, you got that baby there. That's this a, is Josh's baby. That's what it is, Josh's baby. That's the only thing that Josh has got is that baby. He's supposed to be here. I'm such a bad person. Amber. No, I don't deserve to live. I don't deserve to be a mom. Josh deserves to be a dad. <laughs> and Josh isn't even a person anymore. You can't talk like that. I'm so sorry. And you can't talk like that in front of them. You gotta hold it together, baby. I can't stop seeing Josh fall. I just want to be back in bed, laying with him. That's never going to happen again. The person I couldn't even imagine being separated from is dead. tell myself this isn't real and this is all gonna be over soon. Josh hates me. I'm not even gonna be able to meet him any in heaven anymore because he just hates me. I killed him. What kind of person am I? You're a loving person that has been abused by Josh just as well. No, oh, I'm a horrible person who could do that. Who could do that? <laughs> Push my husband and make him fall out the window. You, you, I wish I could just go back and know that if I pushed him, it was going to happen. Amber, quit saying you pushed him out the window. <sighs> Did 
did you intentionally? No, of okay. course not. Okay, that's what they're going to take it as, baby. I just don't understand this whole... Legal system? No, not that. I don't understand the whole pattern of events of the last year. Us getting married and going to Alaska. Everything in Alaska, me being pregnant. Coming back here, getting kicked out of mom's house, going to the apartment, and then all for it to just, Josh just fall out of a high rise building. Watching him flail and think that he, you know, my last thought was please catch yourself. <laughs> and I would just want to know what was going through his head if he knew he was going to die. <laughs> If he said a prayer, or if he cursed my name, or if he just thought that he could catch himself too, and then just watching him hit the ground. Is there no balcony there from the living room? No. For the rest of my life, everyone's going to think I'm a murderer. My family, my whole family, I just want to go back. Please, I just want to go back and just not, not push him, just catch him something. <laughs> this can't be real. And now I'm gonna go to prison. And Josh is dead. My baby's gonna get taken away from me. Little Levi. He's gonna have to grow up without dad. All because of me. <laughs> I mean, I know what I have to do. What is that? What do you have to do? You're gonna have to quit saying that. Yeah, I know. You That's didn't. What I'm saying. You didn't kill him, Amber. I know, but. It it was an accident that went wrong, but because of me. I mean, I know I can't say those things. I know what I have to do to keep me and Levi safe. So the next day, Amber was arrested for second degree murder after police say an argument occurred when Amber pushed her husband Joshua out of their high rise apartment where he fell 17 stories to his death on top of the building's eight story parking garage. Police say Josh had been scared of Amber during their relationship. He had filed a restraining order against his wife for physical abuse in May, but Amber's attorney said Josh was the real aggressor. Amber said that day Josh was screaming and yelling at her when he charged at her and she pushed him away, and then he tripped and he fell back through the window. The day before the incident, Josh and Amber had gotten into an argument and Josh had packed his bags and told Amber he, he was going to stay with his parents for a few days and that they needed a little break. He was all packed and planning to leave when Amber begged him not to go. The next day, Amber said she was doing laundry but only her clothes and Josh had noticed and asked why she, why she wasn't doing his. And she was like, well, you're leaving me. Like, why should I do your laundry? You know, you want to be in a break, like kind of petty. And that's when Amber says Josh got mad and he shoved her against a wall. And then she pushed him off of her and he stumbled back, tripped and fell out of the window. She said she tried to catch him, grabbed his foot, but he was too heavy for her. And that's when she hoped he would catch himself and maybe just break his leg or something. Like, that's literally what she said to the police. But after hearing her statement and listening to her, her interrogation video, police changed her charge from second to first degree murder, and the public was so split between this decision. One side called her a cold-blooded murderer, and the other half said she was innocent and that it was self-defense. They believed her that the windows were, like, too frail and that there's no way that she could have pushed him out. When Joshua's parents found out about what happened to their son, his dad said he knew instantly it was Amber who killed him and that they were just waiting for the day when this would happen. All of Josh's family and friends said Josh was planning to file for divorce. They said he was scared of her. Um, she was always violent with him and that it was just a matter of time before this was gonna happen. There are several reports from both of them of alleged abuse, but of course Amber's family completely disagreed with that and this case would be families pointing fingers back and forth at each other. Amber was arrested and given a $250,000 bond that she paid and she was out on bail until her trial. 
Amber pleaded self-defense and the prosecution would come back to her with a deal saying if she pleaded guilty, they would only give her five years in prison. However, she refused a plea deal and insisted going to trial saying there was no way a jury of 12 of her peers would find her guilty of these charges. Her trial began two years later in March of 2013 and Amber's defense would blame the windows in the apartment saying how they were too weak for the building. They were only an inch thick and the wrong kind of glass for high rise um, skyscrapers. She said she acted in self-defense and that Josh tripped when he fell out of the window. But the jury would deliberate for only three hours and come back with a guilty verdict, sentencing Amber to 25 years in prison. And of course, Amber was completely shocked. Her son had already been born by this time, he was a toddler, and they were just not expecting to get 25 years and everyone was devastated by the entire outcome. Like, everybody was so sad. But of course, but not Josh's parents. Then, you guys, listen to this. So she gets 25 years and only three years into her sentence on October 4th, 2016, Amber was found hanging in her cell. So she killed herself. Her family was completely heartbroken by this news. They couldn't believe Amber would do this and leave her son behind without any parents. They actually blamed the jail because there was like no staff or security on the night she died and the situation was just very suspicious. But this case was just truly tragic for everyone involved. Like, what do you guys think? Do you think she pushed him on purpose? If so, like, what was her motive? Um, Could this be because he was leaving her? But, like, it was just a break. They weren't leaving for good, you know? Do you think the glass had anything to do with it? Um, Let me know in the comments below. This was, like, I I remember hearing about this. And it it was such a crazy case. Because she got five years, didn't take it then got 25 years and then killed herself after three years. Just so devastating. Anyway, that's it for me today, you guys. I hope that you all enjoyed this nail tutorial. I hope that you like these nails. Total Valentine's Day vibes. I wanna give a quick shout out to my channel members, Maria's Nail Journey, Penny Vestina, Nicole Boyer, Nailed by Sabri Griffin, uh, Michelle Foy, Shelly Bateman, Cassandra Lynn, Enrique Family Goods, China Fierce B, and Kaylin Nails. Thank you so much to my channel members for helping me continue to make this channel be what it is today. I love you guys so much. And if you want to know how to join my channel memberships, link in the description below. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!